Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teacher Nikki, and today we're talking about common mistakes that native Mandarin speakers make. And I'm collaborating with my good friend Joel Milne today because I'm gonna have about 11 tips to share and Joe is going to have the rest of his tips on his channel that you can see at the end of this video. And if you're coming over from Joe's channel to my channel, welcome! Thanks so much for continuing to watch. So I'm gonna be dividing up my tips into three sections. The first section that we're going to talk about is related to word endings. And then the other section that I'm gonna focus on is grammar. And then the last section that I'm going to talk about is pronunciation of words. So let's jump right into those word endings. So one of the word endings that I often hear mispronounced is omitting a sound at the end of the word. For example, G-Y. Think of the word technology. What I often hear Mandarin speakers say is technology. So I will write it out for them and I will write it phonetically and I will say it sounds like G, like the letter G, <laughs> even though there's a Y. You want to make it sound like G, technology. And then the other word that they often omit at the end of a word is an S. So let's just say it's a plural word, like apples, and they're reading a paragraph and they'll just say apple. I hear it time and time again. So be cognizant if you're the teacher, make sure you're listening for that. If you're the student, be cognizant of making that mistake. Another mispronunciation that I hear Chinese speakers make is at the end of the word when there's an E, for example, my name is Nicole. And when I first started, it will say Nicole instead of Nikki because Nikki is like my nickname. When they say Nicole, they say Nicola. And I heard that with other words that end with E. They put an uh, uh at the end. So I learned actually practicing pinyin is because the E sound is like an uh sound. So I think that's why that mistake often happens with Mandarin speakers. Let's move into the grammar section. So one very common mistake that I often hear is that Chinese speakers or Mandarin speakers forget a, an, or the. These are called articles. So a, an, or the is something that can be really difficult because there's certain times we use these and certain times we don't. So, and, and you use them in different ways. So one of them is specific and one of them is more general. So if you say, I'm going to eat an apple, that means it could be any apple. But if you say, I'm going to eat the apple, that means that you're looking at a specific apple, it's sitting right in front of you, you know which one you're going to eat. So that's more specific. And so either people confuse a, an, and the, or they don't say it at all. That's something that definitely you wanna practice. And one way I tell my students to practice this is by listening to native speakers and reading books by native speakers because it could be books or articles but then go in and highlight every time you see a and or the and start to really pay attention to when those words are used that can help a lot and if you're listening you want to take notes take notes of when you hear a and or the and write the whole sentence if you can another word that is often omitted is pronouns so if it's I, you, he, she, it, whatever it may be, the person will start a sentence and they will say, like it, instead of saying, I like it. So in English, we have to have our pronouns. There's other languages out there that you don't need a pronoun. Another word that I had mentioned before, so an S, third person singular, <laughs> is always, I think this might be one of the biggest mistakes or the, one of the most common mistakes that I hear over and over again, is that third person add an S. Add an S. <laughs> so for example, he, she, it likes. They say she like or he like. So please remember to both correct your student or if you are the student listening, <laughs> Be sure to 
practice that because really all it takes is practice. Consonants and vowels. So we're gonna get into pronunciation. There's a few mistakes that I hear over and over. And one of them is with the letter A. So that long A sound, and really it's just vowel sounds in general, the long A or the short A, any vowel, oftentimes they get mis mispronounced. But there's a specific way that the students are saying it. So let's take the word great, okay? G-R-E-A-T, great. It sounds like a long A. But what I hear students say, they say gret, gret. It was gret instead of it was great. So you have to show the student how to move their mouth. So look at how my mouth moves. Great. If I say gret, what does my mouth do? Gret versus great. It opens like this versus like that. Another mispronunciation that I often hear, um, again with the A sound, it's basic. They say basic. So it's the same mistake, basic instead of basic. So again, you just want to show them that long A sound. One word that gets mispronounced a lot too is written. They'll say write, written. And there's other words that are similar to written that are like end with a T-E-N and they forget that it changes, the vowel sound changes. So it could be like bite versus bitten. Those kind of words that they have patterns. So if you could also show them that there's certain words, there's word patterns in English, and if you remember those patterns, you'll remember things more easily. The final word that I've heard over and over again, actually the first time that I noticed this was, I was taking a Mandarin lesson from a bilingual teacher. She speaks both English and Mandarin, and she was telling me it's a major word. It's a major word. I'm like, a major word? A major word? Then I realized she was saying measure. <laughs> So, and then I heard my students one time, one of the lessons that I taught, it had the word measure in the lesson like 10 times. And then I realized this is a common mispronunciation because both students were saying measure, measure. So I had to show them, I'm like, you guys are saying like a j sound, j, j. You guys are saying measure, and it's measure. So you really got to kind of sound it out for them slowly, show them the differences, and then, like I said, nine times out of ten, they'll get it. Those are all my tips for you guys. Oh my gosh. How could I forget to one-up Joe? I left the eleventh tip out of the video. <laughs> the last tip was supposed to be omitting the word to. So for example, I like to, I have to. Students will often say, I like go the park, instead of saying, I like to go to the park. And they'll often say, I have eat breakfast this morning, instead of I have to eat breakfast this morning. So this is one of those things you can just write it on the screen and then put a blank space, circle the blank space and say, do you know which word you should have in between like and go? And then sometimes they just don't know, so then you have to let them know. And then you write it in for them, and then they're like, oh, yeah. So it's just those little words that they sometimes forget. Anyway, thanks for joining, you guys. You know, since I was editing in one more clip, I figured why not do a second edit in? Because the one mistake that I mentioned with great and basic really could be counted as one tip. So the final 11th tip is actually mistaking the word some with a or an. For example, a student might say, I had some great idea instead of saying I had a great idea. Or, I had some thought about this or that instead of saying I had a thought. So that's the final mistake, you guys. Bye-bye. Head on over to Joe's channel. If you're starting at my channel, make sure you head over to Joe's channel to see the rest of the tips. He's got a, a lot of awesome ones too. The link in the description box. All right, you guys, thanks so much. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe, put your bell on, like the video. Tell me any other things that you've noticed in the comments that you've seen 
uh, Mandarin speakers make the same mistakes that I didn't mention. All right, you guys. Hopefully this video was helpful and see you next time. Bye-bye.